볼게요. 아 s c r i p t u r e reading today is taken from Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Well, today we are looking at the fruits of the spirit and today specifically we are looking at kindness. And kindness is one of those things that I think is missing from today's world. You know, kindness is something that that's pretty ordinary. But if you stop to think about it, kindness is something that is is remarkable and inspiring. See, showing the fruit of kindness can literally change lives and has changed lives. There was an old uh, TV show with a kind old man who sang about being a good neighbor. Uh, perhaps you remember watching it or, or watching it with your your kids or your grandkids. And I'm talking, of course, about Mr. Rogers. Well, about a year or two before Fred Rogers died, according to a TV Guide article, you know, Fred Rogers for, was just pretty much what you saw on TV was pretty much what you, you got. He was... A uh, humble, kind man. And he drove a plain old Chevy Impala for years. One day, the Chevy Impala was stolen from the street near the TV station where he filmed his show. Well, he filed a police report, and of course, all the newspapers and, and TV news picked up the story about Mr. Rogers' car, being stolen. Amazingly, within 48 hours, the car was left in the exact place where it was taken from with an apology note. It read, if we had known it was yours, we wouldn't have taken it. The impact of uh, Mr. Rogers' kindness well, theologian William Barclay once said, he said, many people have been brought into the church by the kindness of real Christian, by the kindness of real Christian love, than by all of the theological arguments in the world. How many times in your life have you, have you felt discouraged or you felt like everything was against you only to meet someone who was willing to show kindness to you, and that changes your perspective. How important is kindness? In a 2003 study of 37 cultures around the world, 16,000 people were asked about the most desired traits in a mate. And the answer for both sexes was kindness. Imagine that. 16,000 people said the most desired trait, whether male or female, was the trait of kindness. Everybody wants to be treated kindly, but sadly, too many people have trouble being kind to others. There was a study done of school bullies to learn why they bully other kids. And the answer? Most bullies do it because they enjoy doing it. Well, the Bible tells us that God knows us exactly 
how we are. No excuses. No justifying self-talk. You know, that I did this because I had a reason. Or you don't know what this is like, so this is why I did it. God tells us it shows us exactly how we are because he is the one that created us. And like bullying kids, our, our human nature tends towards the negative or tends toward the selfish actions because of sin. And unless we live out biblical kindness, we are not going to live a life of kindness towards others. Now, some people think kindness is a weakness or showing a weakness. It's, it's not for the go-getters. It's not for the ambitious. It's not for the ones that want to get ahead. That's a big mistake. If we want God who is the ultimate control of how things go in the universe to be kind to us, we need to be kind to others. It says so in Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. We also know this as the golden rule. So whatever you wish for people to do to you, do also to them. So why don't we practice kindness more? You know, people have many excuses. They say, uh, I'm too busy, or somebody else's problem, or that person deserves the suffering that they're going through. God is, is punishing them. That's why, mistakenly, like Job's friends said in the book of Job, but see, God doesn't accept excuses for not showing kindness. In Matthew, again, in chapter 5, verse 7, it said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. We could say, blessed are those who are kind, for they shall receive kindness. In 1982, California peace activist Ann Herbert wrote something on a placemat at a restaurant. And you've probably heard a variation. Well, I know you've heard a variation of this. What she wrote was, practice random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty. We don't hear the much, much about the senseless acts of beauty these days, but we do hear random acts of kindness. And so someone eating with her was impressed and wrote these down and Today, there is a world kindness movement, and there are many organizations out there that spread the concept of kindness throughout the country. But biblical kindness is different from random acts of kindness. Why? Because random acts of kindness is something that you do, and you do it mostly for the good feeling that you get for doing the act of kindness. 
And many people do random acts of kindness for, for the publicity or for the recognition. But biblical kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. So it is a part of us. It's not an external act. It's something that is within us. It's a character. It's an ethical thing. An ethical way of living. See, God gives us the reason for kindness. We don't do kindness for the feeling. It's something that we do because God commands it and the Holy Spirit guides us. Well, here's the biblical meaning of kindness. It comes from the, the, the Greek word Christostes, which is a noun. Of course, we know a noun is a person, place, or thing. And the Greek word is used ten times in the New Testament. It's translated once as good, and the other nine times it is translated as kindness. And what it means, it's an eagerness to put others at ease. It's, it's being merciful, sweet, and tender. It is having a sweet and attractive temperament, showing friendly regard. It, it's a usefulness or a moral excellence meaning it's a, a character, or it's a demeanor, or it's a, a personality, it's a part of us. And it sounds like what we read about Jesus in the New Testament. See, Jesus is our best example of kindness. You know, when I first looked at this, I, I got that picture of Jesus, you know, sitting on the rock and, and the kids are out on the, on the grass and he's talking to them and, he, and he's got the little lamb up on his, up on his shoulders. I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen that, that picture. And that was what came to mind when I, when I first thought of kindness and, and Jesus. But Titus gives us the, the, the biblical picture. It says, Titus 3, verses 4 and 5, But when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us new birth, and new life through the Holy Spirit. And the same example of kindness is shown to us in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Together with Christ Jesus, he also raised us up and seated us in the heavens so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable, immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. See, those two verses are telling us that the kindness or goodness of God is for our benefit. And it's for the benefit of humankind. It is God's loving kindness which first comes from the fruit of love. See, first we see and experience God's love, then we share that love back with God, but also with others. Now, many people will try and tell you that the God of the Old Testament is different from the God 
of the New Testament. But we find the kindness of God very clearly in the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. But let him who boasts, boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness or unfailing love, justice and righteousness on the earth, for I delight in these things, declares the Lord. See, kindness is because of God. But it also has a benefit for us as found in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17 tells us, A man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. See, kindness benefits us. And without kindness, we only hurt ourselves and by extension, we hurt others. So kindness is something that we are to possess. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 says, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. See, we are to put on or to make an effort to have compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. And where does it come from? It all comes from the Holy Spirit. Now over in Romans chapter 3, verse 12, it says this. And this is God reminding us that he sees us as we truly are. All have turned away, Romans 3.12, all have turned away, all alike have become useless. There is no one who does good, does what is good, not even one. In this passage, Paul is telling his Jewish readers that they are no better than the Gentiles. Now, a few moments ago when I said kindness, Christates, was translated good once in the New Testament, this is the place. The word good is the same word that is kindness in the other nine places in the New Testament. And what it's telling us is we cannot be good or kind-hearted without God and the Holy Spirit in our lives. Any goodness that we obtain, any goodness that we have, comes from God. A person can do all the, the random acts of kindness that they want. But the only way for us to show true kindness or true goodness is doing it God's way with kindness from God. Now, it takes a genuine effort to be truly kind. See, kindness requires that we have concern for others. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 tells us, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. See, our natural human nature must be replaced by God's nature. And that can only happen by receiving the gift of God's Holy Spirit that lives in us and produces wonderful fruit for the benefit of others. See, Galatians reminds us the 
fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. See, each characteristic that is here not only relates us to God, but it helps us to relate to others the way God wants us to relate. Now, patience, the previous one we looked at, is explained as a fruit of God's Spirit. But patience is linked with kindness in two other places, in 2 Corinthians and also Colossians. And all of them are important parts of love. Because it tells us over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, that love suffers patiently and is kind. So how does one obtain the Holy Spirit? Well, the Apostle Peter explains how in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible has several or many examples of biblical kindness. And just to look at a few of them. King David showed kindness towards Mephibosheth who was a relative of King Saul and Jonathan, his enemy. But David invited Meshibosheth to eat at David's table. The Shunammite woman and her husband towards the prophet Elijah, they gave him a, a place to stay and invited him to eat at their table. In the book of Acts, Dorcas, a much-loved woman who is always doing good works or kindness and acts of charity. And of course, the most famous one is the Samaritan in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Barnabas, who is known as the son of encouragement, And then there is the virtuous wife who diligently attends to the needs of her family and of many others. Proverbs 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. I mean, may our tongues be guided by the law of kindness. See, Jesus Christ practiced kindness that was radical for that time and that culture. He always had great concern for women. He had great concern for men. He had great concern for children, adults, the outcasts, the handicapped, for other races. For the sick, for the weak, as well as the strong. And he often wore himself out praying for people, healing people, feeding people, helping them in so many different ways. And when Jesus looked on the multitude of people with all of their problems and all of their sicknesses and all of their confusion. The Bible tells us that he was moved with compassion or moved with kindness. See, kindness should begin with those that are closest around us. Unfortunately, the ones that are closest to us are usually the ones that experience our worst behavior.
But in Luke chapter 6, Jesus gives emphasis. He tells us that we must be kind to everyone, not just our family and friends, but kind to everyone. Luke chapter 6, verses 31 through 35. <clears throat> And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners, lead, sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But verse 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. You see that? God is kind to the ungrateful and evil. Can we do any less? Should we do any less? See, we need to imitate Jesus. And be moved with kindness and compassion. And we too should be helping and sharing and caring and encouraging and extending mercy. And we need to be filled with compassion and kindness. As we are able and as the Holy Spirit prompts us. And so with each one of us, may the fruit of the spirit of kindness continue to blossom and to grow. And above all, may we each strive to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Who showed each person God's love. Who showed it to each one of us. And also gave us the greatest example of God's kindness for us to follow. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 452. Would you please stand, My Savior's Love, number 452. <laughs>